Hey everyone, my name is Sam. Thanks for checking out this video. If you get to the end and liked it, then give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe and the bell notification, and just bear with me for a few minutes. I have a needy dog right now. So as always, I wanted to tell you about all the books that I read this week, um, and I had a weird, like, kind of, like, all over the place reading week in terms of what I read and if I liked it. But I read a fair amount, um, and I'm really happy that I've been able to kind of keep up with how much I've been reading um, with all of my work stuff. So first off, I read Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim, and I was unsure if I was going to read the arc or just uh, listen to, like, the uh, listen and or follow along with the new edition, because I know there were some discrepancies that people were taking issue with, um, and I had an arc of it. I decided because the issues that people were having with was the finished copy, I went and fin read the, the finished copy. I followed along with the arc as I could, um, but c because my interlibrary loan for the uh, finished copy didn't come in fast enough. But I read Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim, and I didn't see any of the big issues that I think the, the biggest issue I heard that people were having with it was that it was supposed to be ableist. Um, I'm, I'm not in any way an own voices reviewer for that, but I didn't really see anything that like that that was flagged. Um, so as sort of a bit of an explanation, the main character is the daughter of this family. Her brothers are sent off to war and die at the beginning of the book. And her family's shop uh, as tailors is struggling. And in this world, it's, it's quite a patriarchal, <laughs> patriarchal world where women are kind of shoved down a little bit. Um, so he, she, the main character, um, pretends to be her brother, who does have a physical disability, a limp, uh, and enters the uh, royal tailor um, uh, like competition to become the, the tailor for the heir, well, the, the, the king's bride-to-be, which has solved uh, the war that has brought that long war to an end, though she did lose two of her brothers in it. So she pretends to be her brother, and her brother has a limp, and then when she's not pretending to be her brother, she stops. Um, I didn't find that it was ever mocking her, it was just to take on his persona, um, and whenever someone finds out that she's not her brother, um, she doesn't continue to do the limp. So um, that just seemed sort of logical to, to me, um, but I'm open if someone had any it did have issue with that. I'd be interested to hear the, the point of view. Cause I kinda... Other than that, it is a bit of a, a sort of a Mulan influence. It is just Mulan meets Project Runway. But I feel like that was kind of deceptive, kind of smart marketing, because that was the reason I did get interested in the book. However, that part of the book is done like before like the third way in Mark. At that point, it goes into this adventuring and traveling. Um, she has to go onto this quest to find these certain materials in order to become the royal tailor. And the royal, the princess that she's essentially going to be the tailor to, uh, is trying to make it impossible to get married because she doesn't want to get married. And there's this whole political thing going on in the background. I would be a lot more interested in that um, than what happened here. Not that it wasn't interesting, but I feel like the background just had a lot more interest. I'm someone who enjoys more, a lot more political stuff. I hate when it's just thrown in the background. I'm like, but wait, that's clearly important. Come back. Tell me about this. So hopefully the sequel will include a bit more of that. I, I would be really curious to, to, I am definitely going to read it. I'm really, really curious to see how that goes. I actually did like the romance in this. So in here, the main character, and I, I, I said it kind of jokingly, but it's something that I can't not think about. So the romance is between like a 17 year -ish old girl and like a 500 year old -ish man bird. Where does the YA community land on those sorts of relationships? Because I realized that we have an awful lot of books that have, like, teenage-ish girls, I'm still including, like, 18 or whatever in that age, who date, like, um, generally a lot of the time men who are, like, 6,000 years old and can't die. Do we, like, give it a pass because they, like, are, like, not deadable? Not, that's not a word. De not deadable. Um, what's, what's the word where you can't die? Oh my god, I'm a hot mess today. That, uh, where you can't die, essentially, or you can't, like, die, like, die of age, which is, like, Magnus Bane sort of thing. Oh my god, Cassandra, Cl I didn't even think of that. Magnus Bane, like, Alec is, like, 17, 18, and, like, Magnus is, like, what, five, six thousand years old? Wow. Is that a problem, or am I really overanalyzing this? Anyways, I actually did really enjoy this book. It kind of has its slow parts, but I did enjoy it. I, I didn't hate any of the characters, really. But like I said, I found it was, like, kind of weird that they kept kind of, like, throwing background, like, political stuff in, but then didn't totally, like, explain it. I was like, wait, come back, come back. Wait, you need to have explained that. So in the end, I think it sits between, like, a 3.75 of 4 out of 5 stars. Um, I'm definitely going to read the sequel, but it was smartly deceptive, um... 
the marketing of the book that if you're looking for a full book on Mulan meets Project Runway, that's like the first third or so, and that's it. And then it's done. So just, you know, be aware of that. Then I read The Sisters of the Winterwood by Rena Ross, I think it is. And I am so angry that I hadn't read this before. Someone, I don't even remember who it was, and I said this in my review, I kind of wish I had because I want to go yell at them. Someone was like, oh, it's like kind of like a Russian-inspired, like, fantasy with, like, bears and swans and, like, a small community. It's about Jewish pogroms, like, before the world, the Second World, like, World War. And, like, I, I, that is something I'm so incredibly interested in. Anything to do with Eastern European and just, like, anti-Semitism and all that stuff, because the amount of people that I meet that were like, I don't understand, like, why all of a sudden, we, like, why did we target the Jewish community in the Holocaust? And I'm like, because we've done it for thousands of years. Dude, like, I, I, I like, I literally took a Russian history course, um, a French Revolution course, where we literally started off, like, the whole thing of being like, and it started off with anti-Semitism, where a soldier messed up and then blamed his, like, co-part who was Jewish, and then he got run out of town, because everyone just hates the Jewish community, apparently. Like, it's, it's actually, like, astounding to me how quickly, and it's kind of happening now, it's still, I, I still hear all those like stupid people who are like the jews are running the world but like we're doing it the same thing with a lot of the muslim community now of as soon as something bad happens we target a minority and then we try and pit everyone against them to to emphasize that otherness and we've done that for forever that's just history and for a long time we have loved to target the jewish community and i i find it interesting too because jewish community there is the cultural aspects and then there's the religious aspects and the people that i do know who are jewish there is that still even to this day a lot of them and even though they're in like modern families like they don't they're not orthodox jewish there is still this expectation of but you have to marry jewish so we can keep our we can survive so they it's been such a long thing of targeting the jewish community that they're at that point still it's a part of their just existence of we have to continue to marry within our own communities in order to just freaking survive because people always target us which is astronomically insane and i hate human beings for it but this was an interesting book. It's very, like, lavish written, and it's not so much a fantasy like it is, but it's not really a fantasy. It's a lot about anti-Semitism before the World War in this, in this community that is in Eastern Europe, and it is on Voices as well. The main character, the author, is Jewish herself, and it's about her family's own experience being essentially chased out of Eastern Europe and before the World Wars. So that was really, really, like, I, I really appreciate, I want more books that talk about that sort of stuff, in YA especially, because I feel like people are just relatively ignorant because we don't, we don't tend to write about the Jewish community before World War II. We like to, and then we just like, we, we have the super emphasis in the Holocaust of like, look what we did to them. And then like, that's kind of it. And I'm like, but you know, they survived the Holocaust. They continue to live as a community. Like it gave me some sort of representation in that. So I feel like this was a really interesting perspective. This was a really interesting geographic area and time period that I have not ever read a book on. And there's also main character. I kind of loved it. And it kind of keeps continuously bringing it up that she's like well my sister's always been really skinny and I've always just been bigger and then like she transforms and it's because she's a bear and I just thought that was so freaking sweet and cute and like it's never like oh like she's a bear she's a big fat bear it's just like oh look at this like little little swan and then look a bear the bears are bigger they're they're wider so I just thought that was kind of wonderful <laughs> as someone who was definitely plus size myself um that was just kind of really cute actually to me I really really liked that part of it and yeah in the end I think it's going to be that if you're someone who reads a book for like the general plot this might not be something for you but if you're some interested in writing reading a book about like how anti-semitism like flourishes so fast how long it's living um a lot of Jewish like culture this would be a really, really good book for you. And I actually think the, the writing is really, really cool. Um, I know it has pretty mixed reviews on Goodreads. So I'm going to definitely keep an eye out on everything else this author puts out. Then I really quickly ran through This Is How You Lose the Time War by oh, these two authors that names are totally escaping me. So this is uh, actually, I think it's kind of technically still a novella. It's under 200 pages. But this book, like you're thrown into the middle of it. I don't even know how to like honestly like review and or explain it. You're thrown into this middle, the middle of this kind of like conflict civil war thing and it's jumping all over timelines and it's the perspective of a girl named Red and a girl named Blue and they're on de different sides. One is essentially chasing the other and they fall in love over these letters. So like first of all, the amount of time travel books I've been finding lately that have queer representation like five stars for that whole genre. I know another, what's it called? Another, um, uh, 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 another timeline by Anna, Anna something. It's coming out like next week. 
or today when you know on Tuesday when it's coming out I have it pre-ordered but it's like all about cis and cis uh, cis transgender non-binary people like going and being like no we're gonna save like feminism and like fight against the against the patriarchy and like it's just like so much queer rep and then I found out the psychology of time travel has queer represent queer rep in it as well so like boom like I'm just so excited about all that's happening but like for reals First of all, the whole book I couldn't help thinking of the Matrix because there's red and blue. So immediately my mind goes to like Morphe with the red pill or the blue pill. And then I just kept thinking of the Matrix and Keanu Reeves and like, and then the whole Keanu Reeves thing that we can always find him in every time period. It's, I don't know what happened with my brain. So like, I legitimately can't review, like, I don't know how to explain this book. The romance, like the language used in it is really like, really romantic like you can't read that and not feel the chemistry not feel the passion between the two characters even though they're not in the same timeline or the same geographic place and they're fighting against each other it's just so weird and such a good book it was exactly as long as it needed to be and I feel like the fact that you're thrown into the middle of it not really comprehending what is going on it actually really did uh, a, sur a good a justice service to the book. So I would really highly recommend. Then I read The Motion of Puppets. This was a book that I was really excited to read. It actually, every time I had gone on Goodreads or Novelist or whatever to look up a book that I was like, oh, I read this book. What else? It was always there. So I was like, maybe I should finally freaking read this book. <sighs> okay, so this is sort of a DMF, but not really. I read, like, I got to the two thirds mark and I was like, and it's not a long book either, folks. Like, it's like, 300-ish pages. I got to the two-thirds mark and just had given up at that point. It was so bored. So I just started skimming and then I read the last two chapters. So like whatever that little amount is there. I am so flabbergasted as to who this book is for. Like and I, I don't think that's a good thing for a book. The cover is very middle grady. The price point is very adult. It's like $37 in Canada for this book. The contents inside of it, I don't know. I It's, it's, uh, Basically, every book that's been set in Canada that I've read has just been a massive disappointment. So I've just given up on that. But like, I, I don't like there's a, a woman goes missing and becomes a puppet because she's kidnapped by puppet like toy people. But I don't really think it's ever totally explained that that background. And there's no like happily ever after. I didn't comprehend where the heck the entire plot was for this full thing. And then you get to the end and like nothing had happened. And I was just kind of like, what the heck was this? Like, if it, I can deal with slow paced books if you do something when when nothing's happening, like develop characters or the world or whatever. But like, I don't, I don't even know if the author took like, they, I mean, they must have, but I've read this and I was like, does the author even know what their point is? Like what their plot is, what they're going towards? So this was just a big fat O. Oh, like, I only re review books with ones that get a one star for books that I really detest or like have big issue with. And like, so I gave this one a two stars. But like, that's like, my my kind of lowest unless you're like, abomination. Then I needed a pick me up. So I did a reread of Bringing Down the Duke by Evie Dunmore, but I listened to the audiobook this time. I had pre-ordered this and it came out actually a couple days early, earlier than its publication. So I just frantically read it in one night. So I had actually pre-ordered the audiobook as well. So I finally listened along to the audiobook and I still love it. <laughs> I'm really trashy for romances right now. And I, that's a sentence I never thought I'd say. Then I reread my favorite book of all time, The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. I actually don't think I read it last year. It's the first time in a long time. I tend to read it like once a year or so, ever since I was like, like 10 or 12. Like this book is quite old now, actually, when I'm thinking about it. Um, this is the anniversary edition. So text copyright 2005, so 15-ish years ago. So I would, so about 12. So I think I read it kind of just when I had come out. My brother gave it to me and I threw it across the room. This is a book that is always going to like just hit me in the feels. I don't know that like, I can't really review it. It is my all-time favorite book. I've been reading it since I can ha like have any memories of it. Um, I do have, remember I went on Goodreads to be like, oh, five stars. I hadn't realized I had to review this or rate this because I thought I had already done that. Um, and then like literally it was like someone on my Goodreads was like, up, like, you know, on Goodreads how it shows you like your friends reviews or statuses of the book. And someone had like that I'm Goodreads friends with had put it as one star. So I was like, this book is disgusting. I was like, well, sometimes you have to admit that you're wrong. Okay. There's like 1.6 million reviews of this book or ratings on this book. And it's over four stars. At some point you have to admit that you are wrong, friend. Like that's just that. Okay. So yes, love this book. Hits me the damn feels every time. Then I picked up The Girls, or not The Girls, Girls with Sharp Sticks by Suzanne Young. Um, I knew this was set in like a school, like for like an Innovations Academy and whatever. 
I got to page 51, which is the start of chapter 5, I think it is. Hold on. Yeah. So the start of chapter 5 is page 51. So I read 50 pages. 50 pages is my bare minimum normally when I'm trying a book, unless there's some big issues. Um, I have never... Uh, it's not that the book was bad. I've ne I can't I can't say that. I have I read, like, a, like not even, like, a, an eighth of it, maybe, at most. Um, it just felt really uncomfortable. Um, I'm hoping... Like, I'm assuming it takes on a lot of the topics that it was discussing. Maybe it's just my mood, but I don't want to hear about a school where, like, all of these male teachers are abusing and telling the girls that they have to be this and, like, the parent. It just seemed very, like, handmade detail, kind of, but, like, in a small school, like, kind of isolated community, but the whole, like, the world isn't like that. It just, you know. And there was, like, somewhere, like, this guy shoves her down the stairs and scratches her and then blames her and then she takes it, like, and then goes to the doctor and is like, it's my fault. I was talking to another human being. It was just, it made me so uncomfortable and icky. So maybe if you're interested in books like Dystopians about, like, women's rights or something, maybe this will be a, a topic. I hope it deals with it. I'm assuming it does. Um, I just, it, it did, it was, I'm icky. It made me really uncomfortable. And I, I just didn't feel like reading that. So DNF, but, like, I, I only read 50 pages. Don't take that as us to the, apply that to the whole book. Then I did my reread of The Dire King by William Ritter. This is the fourth and final book in the Jacoby series. Uh, this is, again, another reread. I had 100% rated this book and reviewed it on Goodreads. And Goodreads just deleted my review. I've been noticing that for a bunch of books. The Black Witch. I wrote this freaking essay review when it came out. And then I looked the other day. It's all gone. It just it's just deleted. I have all the comments of like three hundred comments or, or fifteen whatever how many comments it was, and then I'm like, where the hell's my review? It's just gone. So I don't know what the hell's going on with Goodreads. But this is another one. My reviews just disappeared. So I have to eventually go back and fill out. But like, I love this series. I think the Ghostly Echoes book is still my favorite. Um, just because we get so much of Jenny. Um, and this is kind of like a bittersweet ending, you know, not everyone makes it alive, but I really like this and I kind of like wish this had been a bigger like ongoing series that he would have done, like continuing all these mysteries that they had. But I love this series. Love it so much. And the last book that I read this week was Before the Devil Breaks You by Libba Bray. This is the third book in the Diviner series. <sighs> I read about this on Instagram, but like, I'm actually really in it, it like, it, like insanely pissed that the publisher... Who's the publisher of the series? Why they couldn't get, for lack of a better term, their shit together with these covers. I myself have not touched these books for a while and never bought them because they kept changing. And to me, the inability either means it's not selling well, um, as they expected, or they don't know how to market it. And I am insanely pissed because this is the covers that I think they've settled on, finally. The fourth book has the same theme. Um... They have one of the most diverse casts I have ever read in a, in a YA book, okay? In a YA series, too. There is so much freaking diversity, which I'll get into in a second. And in not any of the freaking covers have they ever done anything to emphasize that, to show that off, especially in historical fiction set in the 1920s. They deal with interracial relationships. There are black characters. There are mixed race Asian characters. There is an asexual character in a female-female potential romance there. There are people with physical disabilities. There is a Jewish person in here. Why in the hell don't any of these covers that they can't seem to ever freaking settle on emphasize that or show that off? Because this is an important this oh my god these books have got this book this was the best of the series so far and this was such a political book it's very much still on the same like plot as the rest of the books and it's continuing on but it is very political it's we've brought in the pinkertons about the abuse of power and then we have these someone's being threatened that they're losing their job because of being in an interracial relationship at the time period. We have another one's talking about domestic abuse. You have another person who has physical disability and then bringing in, they never use the term asexual, but she is asexual. Like I have every, like she specifically says, I've never had a sex drive to anyone, but like, I don't hate kissing this person, but like, and, but I've never even been even remotely like potentially looking at men. So like, obviously they're not going to use the term asexual at that time period, but like, why in the heck, even the, like there's, uh, that just angers me so much that this cast is one of the most diverse casts and I've never seen it marketed as such. I've never seen it promoted as such. And that really pisses me off because more people should read this. I know people who haven't read it because of the same freaking reason that the, the, they don't know that the publishers know what they're doing because they keep changing the freaking cover. But yeah, so I mean, in the in, in, in here, we're dealing with this shift in like how people see the diviners and the ghosts and the king of crows is back and the possessions of people and Memphis and his little brother. And just like, again, um, 
um, anti-Semitism, racism, abuse, uh, this shot at immigrants are brought in here and foreign workers, all of the things that they're dealing with in the freaking 1920s that we're still dealing with now, it actually, like, I'm beyond angry about this. Like, why wouldn't they do, like, either, like, iconic, really good, like, covers, consistent freaking covers, like, to emphasize that, I've never read a book with this much of a diverse cast before. Like, oh. My. So, I mean, like, I don't know if I'm eventually going to try and find this this series, because this is a good one to, like, reread around Halloween. I don't know if I'm going to try and find, like, some foreign covers that maybe were consistent throughout the whole time. I don't know what the hell the publishers were doing with this thing. I don't. They really, like, like missed the mark on that. It's, it's actually angering me, <laughs> as you might be able to tell. I would really recommend this series, though. Um, it talks about a lot of topics that are not that were very uh, important in the 20s that were a lot of discussion and we're still dealing with it now all of the anti-immigrant rhetoric that we have going on all of you know even now we still have issues in some communities of like being in a mixed race relationship and physical disability and all of these different things so would highly recommend the series this is the best book of the trilogy quartet well it's only three out so far um and the publisher needs to get their life together because what they did to the covers of this series is just disgusting. Like, it really physically angers me that more people haven't picked it up because the covers are freaking, like, they can't keep their mind straight. And then people are like, well, I'm not buying it. If they can't freaking, like, I'm the whole point I'm buying a book instead of keeping it, like, borrowing it from the library is so that they'll not look, they'll look cohesive on my, on my, on my bookshelf. Anyways, um, <laughs> that tone of change very quick. Um, those are all the books that I read this week. I am finishing up The Wedding Date, I think it is, by Jasmine uh, Gilroy and hopefully getting on to murder funding and written on my own hearth blood next week. So, Stay tuned next week for those re the reviews of those, hopefully. And yeah, I will see you on Tuesday. I will link all of these books in the description down below. Make sure to check them out. And I will link all of my social media down below. If you follow me, I will follow you back.